Another edition here of Getting There with Gaz, where we talk about the career journeys of athletes, coaches, media members, business owners, and more from upstate New York. That setup there that you've heard on many podcasts, this guy fits a bunch of those, by the way. <laughs> Athlete, yeah. business owner, media member. He's got them all now. Matt Halleck joins us. Uh, Matt, for those who don't know, let's go back to a younger version of you. Six, seven, eight years old. Sure. Where'd you grow up? What did you want to be as a kid? And was that same dream job you wanted when you were 18? Yeah, crazy. Um, take going way back. So uh, for the listeners in the capital region or anywhere. So, you know, grew up uh, in Colony. Um, if anybody is familiar, just to put some geography on the map, I grew up in the Blue House across Sand Creek Middle School in Colony, New York, but in the, in the capital region um, of our capital in Albany. So, yeah, I grew up all things sports, right? Came from a sports family. My father um, was um, All-American football player, played at Iowa, was homesick, came home to Loudonville um, and played at Santa College football, uh, was an All-American there, took over the head coaching job. And then I was the firstborn, so he stepped away from the college ranks and uh, coached at Bisham again. Um, and I pretty much grew up on the sidelines at Bleecker Stadium, if everybody knows Bleecker, uh, in the Capital Region, um, running the kickoff tees back and forth before I got smoked by all the high schoolers. So grew up in and around sports, um, played basketball, football, baseball from the time I was six, seven, eight years old. My father coached all the uh, the youth sports and then just took an acceleration and really a liking to baseball, uh, football. I loved, but I was a middle linebacker and a fullback and just hated being involved in collisions every single play. <laughs> so <laughs> I stepped away uh, when I was 12 from football and then just played baseball and basketball primarily uh, year round throughout colony and then travel baseball throughout the Northeast. Um, but yeah, just a, another, Another upstate New York kid now webbed into, you know, building uh, the brand of Halleck Hitting Garage and giving back to the game that give, gave me so much through my youth in high school and collegiate career and training youth athletes. Um, you know, not only in and around the Tampa Bay area where I reside now, but running up and down the eastern seaboard and, and giving back and providing unique camp environments and, and instruction. So and some of the largest players of the game are jumping on board for what we're doing in, in a lot of the philanthropy missions too, in these areas outside of the instruction and the uniqueness of me and how I, uh, I train. Um, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a really cool run, but thanks again, uh, guys for having me on. No doubt. I want to go back to that family pedigree and that prestige yeah. going on a little bit, because it almost feels like you hear this comparison when people grow up as a, a twin, like that's just a life. I knew it didn't feel any different hearing that, that's your surroundings growing up. Did you ever like look around and be like, I don't think this is how other kids dads have had this type of athletic background or background it's, like that. Yeah. Yep. That's that's yeah. A hundred percent. I wasn't really fully aware until probably I was in my teens. Right. And my, my dad worked for the office of general services and underneath the egg um, right by MVP arena, but um, <clears throat> in the Capitol and outside of being on the sports field with him as a coach when I was a youth um, and him coaching my teams that I played, I was also going to work with him regularly and hearing him interact with employees and uh, interact with, um, you know, external individuals. He ran the convention center down, down in all the meeting rooms with the politicians. So I was just absorbing a ton of information um, as he was a servant leader to, you know, developing all things, either youth through sports or creating environments at the convention center that were either boxing maxes. I got to meet Mike Tyson when he was coming up, uh, Mickey Mantle at card shows, seeing different graduations and huge charity events. So I was getting a ton of information from this man who was my father. And yeah, when I got to be in my teens, you know, my friends were like, your father's a different human being. Um, and gives back a lot. And and now I'm doing kind of his mission at my age, which is crazy. It's amazing to think about yeah. that. So, so when you this high school level, you mentioned baseball starts to stand out and you start finding yourself excelling. Take us through those like senior, junior year. Are you getting yeah. recruited? And what's that recruiting process like for you? Yeah, it was, uh, was a lot different than it is nowadays. Um, but it was mostly geared towards the capital region and kind of, kind of the New York area. Um, you know, a, a lot of the individuals that you grow up with, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, even outside the, the colony area, you get to know 
you know, your peers. Um, and everybody was kind of getting recruited in, in primarily the suburban council. Um, all stars were all kind of staying home. There was only a few that were going to go outside the state, which was kind of cool. And, you know, was looking really geared to go to St. Rose um, and, and stay home. But um, had a meeting with my father. My father took the reins and, uh, you know, was offered an opportunity to be on the JV team. And we uh, we turned that down, walked out in Mount St. Mary College, about an hour and a half south of uh, Albany and hour and a half south of New York City. A uh, small D3 uh, school offered me an opportunity to come in and potentially start if I could live up to the expectations in the fall. And that was all I wanted to do was play. It, it wasn't D1. It wasn't D2. I just wanted to be a student athlete. I wanted to play the game of baseball. Um, and the environment educationally was perfect because it was small classrooms. It actually, you know, fast forward, it, I graduated more at Colony High School than I did when I went to college. So it was a, it was an academic environment that I knew that I could still <laughs> excel at as well and not get lost in translation of the numbers of huge, you know, academia with colleges or huge universities. Um, and then had a blessed career you know, going, going into college and, and started day one, which was awesome. As a fellow D3 or a D3 athlete from the past, way back yep. when, uh, there's rare times where we get this opportunity to talk about, especially for younger people who are learning about careers, about what Division three athletics can do with this expansion of social media. Everybody's chasing the offer and chasing the visits, which I feel like you and I, like we would have been laughed at if we were like, oh, we're taking an official. Like we never would have Absol posted that stuff. It's Absolutely. such a different world, but – uh, yeah. For people who are looking at the D3 world who don't even know about it, let's discuss what people might not know about the real advantages you can have playing a sport at that level. Yeah, and I, th I think you hit on the key word is playing. Um, you know, that's the biggest thing. And, and you know, everything is getting better. The the performance, and I'm very, very much tied to the AD in, in both the baseball and softball program at Mount St. Mary College. Still, I'm invested um, as an alumni, as a booster, as a Hall of Famer to give back to this program. Division three is no joke in any level. Um, there, there are players that that I've played with that have come out of there and played minor league baseball. Um, I know there's some players out of my college that have played uh, professional or independent ball and other sports too. Um, it's an opportunity for a lot of kids just because uh, the academics. Like you, you're going there to be a true, true student athlete. Um, and not chasing the the dream of being on TV and having all the fanfare of being at a power five conference. But these are very, very good ball players or athletes at any level, female or male, uh, that just want to continue their career in playing sports. And it's at the highest level. Some of these these colleges and universities at the D3 level, um, I, I would if you want to play sports and you still want to enjoy yourself in college and you want to put your nose down and be a part of the university, not that you're not, if you're in, at a division one level, um, highly, highly consider junior college, NAI, D3, D2, do not chase the dream of, of D1s um, or listen to a lot of, come talk to Gaza or myself and we will put <laughs> you through what, what truly it is to be a true student athlete, um, which I feel like I got the, the best experience at the division three level. I got the really, really understand, you know, my, my peers when it comes to academics and being a student. Um, I was involved in, in the college at multiple, multiple levels, uh, you know, in a lot of the activities that maybe I wouldn't have been, I had the opportunity if I was at a, you know, power five division one, uh, cause you're so potted. Um, and then had, like I said, had the opportunity to play, um, you know, from day one and, and, you know, really, really accelerated there when I was at the Mount, which was fun. It always brings a smile to my face when we get to talk about D3 athletics because I think some people from the outside perspective think it's an easier way of a life as a student athlete. You still have fall Grind. ball. The football guys have spring ball. Grind. Yeah, it's still going off at 5 <laughs> o'clock in the morning to get up for yes. the off-season practices. So uh, you mentioned it. You gave me a nice tease there about the success that you have on the field because not only do you get on the field, but later on in your life you are named a Hall of Fame, which is an incredible honor. But just kind Thank of sum you. up a little bit about your actual career. And then when you got that call years later of, you know, what we are recognizing you as one of our standout athletes in our college's history. Yeah, it's uh, I think it goes back to like it's a grind, right? It's a grind at every level. But you you really have to have be self-motivated and push yourself to excel at, at any level. I don't care if it's youth sports or professional sports. Mm -hmm. But at the Division three level, you just don't have all the resources. 
at your disposal. So you have to be kind of create a self-identity to really motivate yourself. And I was going in with a goal and my goal was to start as a freshman. Um, and then, you know, the mantra of, of what my father instilled in me was just outwork everybody on that team um, to ensure that the next year I'm coming back and starting again. Um, and then just really took off with a lot of the senior guys when I was a freshman and sophomore um, that saw the value of me as a leader more than anything of leading this team once they left um, and really gave me some guidance on how to be a better version of myself, um, not only in the batter's box, which obviously which I'm known for, but just a, as a leader of the program, because everybody just wanted to give back and ensure the next class was better than than the previous class when they graduated. But yeah, four years, um, four year starter, four year um, New York State uh, Division Three All Star Rookie of the Year in both of the conferences, Skyline and and Knickerbocker Conference. We played in two conferences, uh, Player of the Year, Junior Year, and and my Senior Year. And then, you know, got the call. I had you know hold a couple records as far as on base average in a season in a career, um, second in the nation, Division Three batting uh, average my senior year. And then, uh, you know, my going into my senior year, I'm like, oh, my God, I, you don't think of, you know, being in a Hall of Fame. Um, but going into my senior year, once we wrapped this senior year uh, in Albany, which was surprisingly enough, my last game was at Heritage Park. Um, the Division Three regional NCAA tournament was the first time Mount St. Mary has ever been to an NCAA tournament. I captained that team my senior year in any sport. It was the first time any sport has ever been to an NCAA tournament. And we came up to Heritage, which I grew up to go into Albany County Yankee games as a kid um, and, and ended my Mount St. Mary career there. And we had a party at my old house on Sand Creek Road with the whole team. And, you know, they, the teammates were start talking about then we're like, hey, you're 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 deserving based on just not the statistics, but based on the leadership and taking this team and making sure the program was set up to draw recruits in for the next couple of years. And then they just have been on a run, uh, one of the best D3 programs in the Northeast since then. I'm very, very proud to have, be a part of it and, and continue, uh, you know, providing support back to the Mount St. Mary program. Awesome. Awesome stuff that's happening there. Really cool to get an opportunity to see it all get paid back forward in the future. Now, as much as we're talking about athletics, at some point, some of our media members know this story, too, that they might be grinding away at our business that are taking a different direction. As much as we love talking baseball, they did force you to go to class and you have to get a degree, I believe. So yes. when you're 22 years old, they tell you you have to leave now. Your eligibility is run out. Uh, what's that next focus for you? Is it baseball in your life? Are you thinking about the professional world? Take us through a 22-year-old yep. or maybe 21 version of you at that point. Yeah, I was I was a young I'm a December baby. And so I was the young. I went into college at 17. It was wild and, and graduated at 21. Um, but yeah, my, my fourth year eligibility was up that last game, um, leading into my senior year, I was being recruited, um, or being scouted, I would say by the Mets, by the Braves, by the Yankees, um, and by Boston and some of the regional scouts. And we were talking all the way up to the May, the May draft on where I may possibly go or not go at all. So there was a realm of possibility of being a professional baseball player. And it was real for a good couple months. Um, when I went undrafted, it got even really real. Uh, cause now you're like, okay, well, what do I do now? Because your career's over. Um, I was blessed to sign a professional independent baseball contract and go and play out in Indiana, which was a culture shock for a New Yorker, but, uh, <laughs> uh, went out to Huntington Berg, Indiana and played for the Huntington Berg dragons, um, professional independent baseball as a 21 year old kid. Um, so again, extending, you know, my playing career and, and why not? I still had a burning desire. I still felt like I was extremely healthy. Um, never had a major, major, you know, serious injury in my career that was, I was shelved for a long period of time. And I was like, let's give this a shot. Let me, you know, at every level I have stepped up to the challenge and, and really rose to the occasion. We'll see where it goes from there and maybe jumping on and filling and signing a, you know, a free agent contract after I was there. Went out to Indiana and realized real quick that all of a sudden I'm not the best ball player there and I'm small. Um, this is professional <laughs> baseball at the lowest level, which is the non-affiliated level. And it was a it was an eye opener. Um, but the cool thing there, it, it just 
stem my love for baseball. Again, I'm going to use the word blessed a lot, but um, the home field that we played on in Huntington Berg is where they shot the movie A League of Their Own with Tom Hanks and Rosie O'Donnell and Madonna and Lauren Petty. And there was three, 4,000 people that came to the first two weeks of spring training just because the movie was shot there. Um, and I remember being a kid at the Albany Colony Yankee games and just wanting an autograph and not knowing who was signing the ball, a la Derek Cheater or Mariano Rivera. I didn't know, you know, so I, <laughs> right. I always stayed after practices until 11, 12 midnight signing balls for these kids. Um, just cause I know the impact it may have on them just right there in the moment. Um, and then tore my rotator cuff in two spots, uh, two weeks or two days before the season started. And that was literally the end of my career. I took a injury clause in my contract. I bought an engagement ring and a jet ski. Um, <laughs> and I moved and I drove my 91 Chevy Beretta back uh, to uh, upstate New York. And that was, uh, that was the, the end of my kind of my playing career. It was the last time I was on a baseball field playing the game of baseball it was in Huntington Berg, Indiana. We've got more in common than I realized. The rotator cuff got you. The labrum got me. Labrum, so D, yeah. <laughs> the D3 athletes going down with shoulder injuries. Now, I got me well, my junior year of college. You got paid to do yours. So we yeah. have more parallels than we might have actually even realized before. True. We A lot That's of commonalities. Right? Yes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so you get the nice injury clause. You get the head out. Like you said, the engage ring, the jet yep. ski. Thank you very much. I'll take the money and run. Uh, what's next? What is that period like for you in your life? And all of a sudden the it's, it's different now. Everything's going to be different. Yeah. Everything's different. Right. Cause everything is so lined up with school in your life, right? Everything. And then if you're, if you're an athlete, it, that goes, that follows parallel or, or runs side by side. And all of a sudden school's done and baseball's done. Well, I knew I still had a potential chance if my arm healed. I didn't have surgery. Um, I could always come back. I played for years at twilight league down at bleaker, for Mike Serbolic and All-Stars Academy. I was on the first All-Stars Academy team and we won multiple championships together. But, um, you know, I know I could come back and play a little bit of summer ball, but that was over. Now I have to make money and be a, be a true, true adult and find out what I want to do. And I got a degree in public relations and, and media studies in school. And I have the gift for gab. You and I guys are on, on, on the wire here, but, um, you know, I could know I could do anything within sales and I know I connected with people really, really well. And at that time, um, Enterprise Rent-A-Car reached out to me and they were really, really hiring and excelling, you know, looking at student athletes that were coming out of college to be leaders. Um, so I joined uh, Enterprise Rent-A-Car and for over eight years throughout um, New Jersey, I moved to where my wife uh well, I got engaged to move to move to the Jersey Shore, but opened rental branches for Enterprise throughout uh, New Jersey and then moved to down south to Tampa, Florida in 04 to start a family and, and did the same thing and really, really had a good career of understanding. Here's a million dollars worth of inventory and vehicles. Now go, you know, make make the branch profitable, motivate, you know, liked peers in your 20s. Uh, sales and marketing and, and had a had a tremendous career with enterprise. And that that really kicked off my love of, I would say, training and development at a corporate level. Um, kind of what I'm doing, I've, I've always done, which is led by example, but also was, you know, a servant leader to my teammates and the people that I was either on teams with, which now were my employees. Um, and really providing a, a, a cool experience to customers too, which is different than other rental branches or other agencies. So yeah, I started at Enterprise Rent-A-Car and, and that was kind of the start of my corporate career, I would say. Well, life sounds good. You get married, you're living in nice weather. Yeah. Life could be work. Right. Like everything sounds good at this point. And even mm -hmm. I like I'm a little cloudy about how this transition is going to happen to how it's hitting garage and enterprise. Oh. So t tell us as much or as little as you want here, because this yeah. area now is maybe the most fascinating part of the interview. Don't worry. Our audio side is about to go to commercial right now. Our visual side is going to find out. Quicker. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So, yeah. How, how did the transition? Right. Um, so uniquely, I would say in 2005, so moved in 2004, working for Enterprise, 2005, we have our daughter, Sophia, who's now going to be a senior, our firstborn. And I knew right away I wanted to get her into sports. Didn't know what she would gravitate to. Obviously, I kind of nudged her along to the baseball softball um, route when she was three, four years old with a little tykes tee. 
Um, she was doing everything righty. I moved her to the left side. So she was closer to first base just so she had an advantage. I, I'm a, any okay. advantage we can grab, you know, guys, you got it. So I moved her to the left side. Um, and then in 2007, showing my age, there was a financial collapse, uh, robo signing a lot of with the mortgage industry um, that obviously hurt a lot of people in spending money. They weren't renting cars. Um, they weren't there. They were damaging their cars, either from an insurance replacement standpoint or their cars were breaking down. They weren't bringing them into shops to get fixed. Um, so I made a decision and gambled on myself and left the rental car industry um, and went into recruiting. Uh, and being a uh, staffing expert in, in, you know, recruiting for large financial institutions. Um, Cause at, at that time it was a good time to get into it because all of the loan processing and origination was going into default. So they needed people to at your bank of America, your JP Morgan Chase is all your big banks to help on the loan modification and default side of staff staffing so much. So I went into staffing um, right around that time, 2008, um, 2009 hit Sophia's playing little league softball and her team goes off and wins the Florida state championship at their little league. And it's, it's 35 year history Ooh. of this league here in South Hillsboro, South of Tampa, that a baseball or softball team has ever won a state championship. And my daughter's team won it. Um, then the parents say, let's, start playing travel softball. And I said, Oh, you have no idea what you're getting into. <laughs> so I joined the coaching ranks um, as the assistant coach and hitting coach. And uh, it just explodes over a six year period. They, we go on a, we, like I played, I coached the eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds. They went on a run throughout the state of Florida, um, the state of Georgia, and, and pretty much won every single tournament or just about every single tournament um, that they played in. Um, and they were playing 100 to 150 games a year. Ooh. So to, yeah, you talk about, you know, excess, but, you know, the girls wanted to do it and the parents were were facilitating it. So we said, let's let's go on a run. And we got a call 2014 um, to join a national brand out of Southern California, uh, Mike Stith and the OC Batbusters as their East Coast expansion team. And they were expanding their travel softball organization to the East coast. Um, and they called the Riverview warrior South of Tampa, uh, cause of what we were doing. And we were now a national brand with a bunch of girls that went to two to three schools in South Hillsboro, traveling nationally, playing, competing and winning at a national level, which was unheard of. If anybody knows just travel sports in general, once you get to the 14, 16, you ranks kids come from all over counties and states to play together this was a team with girls from the same area um and i was the hitting coach so you know i got kind of your brand is built by other people right so i got kind of tagged as the hitting guy um and uh you know these young female powerful athletes that are now teenagers were also you know community leaders they were doing community service they were heads of their class they were obviously tops in in, in softball, now in high school, um, valedictorians, they were, you know, presidents of clubs and a lot of that, you know, from the parents attributed to the way that we train them as athletes to be servant leaders and, you know, be comfortable with failure and understand fear and, and uh, really instilled a lot of life values you know, traveling around the country <laughs> with, with, with youth female athletes. Um, and then the big transition, like how, into the garage, like has the, the setup is coming, yeah. but my father was, uh, was transitioning and passing away in 2018. Now mm -hmm. um, we're in 2018 and I was up at St. Peter's hospital there in Albany and uh, was pretty much his proxy making the decision inside the hospitals, communicating with people outside. Cause he has a large following as a, as a coach in the area. Um, and he said, I'm so proud of what you've done with, the girls, um, but I need you to do more through the game of baseball and softball there in the Tampa Bay area. And I was like, hey, you know what, what more? I was like, okay, yes, sir. Yeah. You know, he's like, I need you to impact the community more through the game. And I said, okay. And then he goes, the biggest thing I need you to do is come back home to Albany and the capital region. And I really need you to come back to your roots and, and impact the community there. Um, and that's really 
that's where Halleck's hitting garage was formed was there in St. Peter's not knowing the plan yet. Um, but the garage was all things. My father, you know, all the tools that you find in the garage were all the tools that he gave me to now fulfill a mission of providing back to the youth through the game of baseball and softball. And then all the community service that my family and my team members do and all the philanthropy and all the volunteerism um, here in the Tampa Bay region and up in the capital region uh, stem from my dad, my dad just never putting a ceiling on anything that I did and challenging me um, up to the last days that he was alive and God bless him. Cause he would, I think hopefully be extremely proud of what we've done since we started it only last year. So we're only about a year and a half into to doing everything is Halleck's hitting garage and our foundation. Yes. Pride for sure. You should be very proud of everything that's happened. I have that yeah. the story behind what comes together. It's very unique, very remarkable. It Crazy. stands out for sure. There's one thing I do want to clarify because this is taping in August of 2022. So when you potentially are listening to this or watching this life could change when we talk about that national brand of the softball players, I know uh, name image likeness is kind of jumping all over the place, but j- just clarify that a little bit where the, the athletes weren't getting paid. It was more like jerseys and stuff, right? Just to clarify that for the audience uh, that might be a, f- a few months uh, behind us. A hundred percent. You could not make any kind of revenue off of yourself um, prior to t- only two years ago. Um, and, and a lot of my, my partners that I work with through the garage at a national level in V1 sports, um, in trophy case locally with with Hunter Moffitt, uh, you know, luckily our, our government and legislature has allowed um, these athletes now at the collegiate level to be able to generate revenue off of their name or go out and seek business and promote themselves or do commercials or, you know, be a brand in, in and of themselves. And, you know, with the acceleration of entrepreneurism and, and where we are with technology, um, it's only right that they're allowing these kids to do that because the money that goes back into these programs, especially in the Power Five conferences, that these athletes at a young level are driving into the universities, they, they are revenue producing sports for colleges and universities. So to give the kids an opportunity now to to make a little bit of money is, is good. But yeah, that was not like that when we played. <laughs> Just definitely wanted to clarify that. And especially, I, yeah. I love the idea, the point now that if you know, we're talking about Halleck City Garage, where if, if it's a young softball player who wants to hold a camp at our local college and get paid to do it for their summer job, great. God bless them. They should be able to do stuff. Through Absolutely. Autographs that we talked about. There's no doubt. Right. So th- now it's this combination of Florida. It's New York. It's Halleck City Garage. So what is your schedule like now? Like, wh- where are you all over the place? Because I know you are, <laughs> are extremely busy when you and I yeah. were texting the other day. Yeah. So we, uh, I just landed back in Tampa last week. So I was on a 22-day run. It actually started in L.A. I was in Los Angeles. I uh, was asked by Major League Baseball to come out for All-Star Week um, at the beginning, beginning of it for their fan experience. Uh, and anybody knows Super Bowls or all-star weekends, they make it a big week of celebration of, of bringing the fans together to provide unique experience for them leading up to the game or the event. Um, and yeah, they asked the kid from colony New York to come out there because, you know, essentially what people have been tagging me as a unicorn, you know, I'm a little bit different than most. Um, I, I, you know, come with 20 years of corporate, chops uh but i also can talk you know five-year-old hitting uh analytics up to professional side you know neuroscience and and biomechanics and and ground force pressure technology so they asked me to come out and you know i worked one day in the la convention center for the uh, fan experience and then i worked 10 hours at a hitting station and did about and i wasn't supposed to be doing instruction but i I ran through and serviced about 1,500 to 2,000 fans um, at the Diamond Kinetics uh, hitting station um, inside the LA Convention Center at Capital One uh, Play Ballpark, uh, which is their paid event for their fans to come in during All Star Week. And got to got to meet a lot of cool people. Um, you know, got connected with Team USA Softball. Uh, got connected with Lisa Fernandez. Uh, all things fast pitch. You know, Olympian multiple times over. UCLA uh, assistant coach, and we're going to be doing some cool things at Garage with with both of them. And yeah, was that now asked to come out to Seattle next year and and work All Star Week uh, the whole time? But yeah, that was I was only there for a short period of time. Um, you know, with with D Scott came out with me as well, and uh, then we went on the start of our tour, and we were 
at the Yankee Red Sox game. And then we were in New Jersey um, uh, for an event, uh, Alex Heading Garage Camp event with Louisville Slugger, and then ran through the Capital Region. We did uh, nine camps in, or six camps in nine days. Um, so it was it was busy. A uh, lot of fun, though, you know, over 300 athletes that we had at our hitting uh, our hitting events, which are different and u- unique. They all have charities of cause that we drive funds or awareness to. Um, Dennis D. Scott is our DJ. That's unique. We make it extremely, extremely fun um, outside the lines as well as the instruction inside the lines um, and made a tremendous impact in our name for ourselves to be able to put on live events. Um, with me in the middle of the big top, you know, uh, um, on the, uh, you know, doing the whole thing. So it was, it was a lot and, and, you know, bless up to my, my family and everybody, you know, the volunteers and, and the employees that helped out. Uh, it, it is, as you know, it's a lot to put on a live event, um, and, and coordinate it and all under the blessing of, of having good weather, which it was hot when I was up there. Um, but it went off real well. And now, uh, a lot of things are happening since I hit the ground and I can't, I, as much as I want to drop the news on this show, um, I have one more meeting tomorrow with some big stuff that's going to be happening with, with Alex hitting garage here in the Tampa Bay area. So that's coming soon, but I'll get it okay. to guys. So we can get All right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You can put that on the Alex hitting garage podcast. I'll let D Scott get you guys. There you screen. go. You guys get, I, uh, Nothing but love for the non-traditional media world. So, well, maybe yeah. you know, maybe I'll even leave a link. Maybe I'll even be that generous at the bottom of the description. Uh, and mm-hmm. I know it's hard to look at it like this because this is why I love these conversations and getting there with guys. Like it's the journey of where you've gotten to or where you're going, and this is clearly on that journey. And I know sometimes with so much stress on that journey, it doesn't always feel like fun because you're kind of looking towards what's the next step and what's the next. You're, you're trying to get there and make it whatever that is in your head what that goal is, but. How yep. often do you think about the future and do you have future goals for where this could go? Yeah. Um, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the athlete in you right there. <laughs> yeah. Just because of the the success that we've had and then the, the good feedback on what didn't work or what, you know, what we can do better and, and being able to self-assess and continue to see how can we change the fan experience at our live events, how I can grow, um, you know, as a professional hitting instructor to five-year-olds up to professional athletes. And I'm getting the opportunity uh, through V1 Sports and some of the industry leaders at the highest level that are believing in just me as a person um, to be an actual professional hitting instructor. And, and I mean, heck, like you said, what what is next and what do you think about, guys? Um, I've been running side by side and working two jobs. I still have been working a full-time corporate job while I'm doing this. Um I just, with the blessing of my wife and my family, left my corporate job and a very, very comfortable, secure job to do this full time uh, just because I, one, believe in myself. I think it's the right time. I wrote it in to the business plan at the beginning of the year. If I was at a certain point um, and had the backing of certain people and believed in myself that I'm gambling on myself and I'm going to do this professionally. And and I'm at that point <laughs> um, okay. now that this is, you know, we're full on Halleck's Hitting Garage and and accelerating, helping uh, youth athletes be better versions of themselves, not only in the batter's box, but a lot of what I bring and, and we talk about is just mindset and approach of just life skills, right? How they, how they, how they, and use the good word, you know, how they run so parallel in sports, um, if you can understand it or have a good mentor or have a good coach, it could change your life, um, you know, from an eight, nine, 10 year old and kind of can set the path for you going into your your middle school, high school, collegiate and, and adult life. Um, and I want to be that vehicle for kids because I've seen the bad. Right. And and as long as I can continue to be at the forefront of doing things for others and helping kids be better versions of themselves at all ages, up to like 21 year olds that I'm I'm helping. Um I know that I'm doing the right thing and I'm making a good career move. So that's, that's the, that's the next step. Yeah. That's a fantastic goal. So we love any of these conversations with offering advice to some of those kids. Now we've offered some advice about athletics and what they might be. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to do that part because that's a reason to join Halleck City garage. That's the advice you'll get working with you, but instead there you go. for maybe an ex athlete or just someone who's passionate about what they do, whatever field it might be, whatever business it might be, what's the best advice you can offer them going into these We'll use a cliche we heard a lot the last two years, uncharted waters or uncharted territories where they want to do something like you're doing right now. Yep. And I, I, I'm i glad that you asked me this because people, 
I've gotten to a point where I'm not, I, you never consider yourself something. People consider you something. They build your own brand. I said that, right? But I've turned into ultimately like a life coach for a lot of my friends. And they've asked me this all the time because I pulled the trigger, mm-hmm. right? And I just said, you know, it's the, it's very cliche and it's like the old Nike commercial, just do it, like go for it. You know, it doesn't have to be a, on a grand scale, but if something that you're passionate about, if it's, you know, playing the piano or, or if it's cooking, there, there's so much out there that you never know what one singular post could do or one, you know, whatever you're sewing. I don't care what it is, <laughs> go do it because the worst thing that you could have is, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, five years, 10 years down the line, um, missing that opportunity to maybe do something. And the reason most people don't do it is because they're in the fear of what others are going to think. Um or they're in the fear of failure. Um, and you can't have any of those two thoughts if you want to really go all in on something that you're truly passionate about. So I always challenge a lot of my friends, um, you know, to really, really do the things that they love to do because the time on this earth is not here tomorrow. We do not know. Um, and you'd be very, very happy um, if you go ahead and you try something. Um, and maybe it turns out to be something, i.e., Alex Hitting Garage, you really, really love to do. And now you have, you know, people backing you and believing you and you're making a career change into it. So Matt Halleck will share all the info, the social media plugs, all that stuff. Well, I won't make you go through it because you've had enough on your mind already. Yeah. So I'll save that <laughs> tough stuff for you. Check out all of that. Thank you for doing this. I know it's a crazy time, especially with August baseball heating up and all the oh. things that are on your schedule. So thank you for carving out time. Keep up the awesome work, man. I saw your story. I thought. I got to get him on as soon as he's got time. You made time for me. Appreciate it and cannot wait to follow where the future takes you guys. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.